Hi, my name is John and welcome to Statistics Tell a Story. Last week, we saw John Harbaugh run the clock down to 33 seconds before taking a timeout against the Bengals. And I know we're almost into this week's divisional games and uh, many of you have probably forgotten about it, but there was a lot of, it took a lot of heat actually, at least early in the week for his decision. And so I want to look at that and the ramifications on his game-winning chances uh, with respect to that decision, okay? Before we do that, we're going to go back to the multiplication principle that we've discussed quite a few times on this channel before. And it's, it's one of my favorites. It's so basic, everybody can use it. And it's quite simply to find the probability of two or more things all happening, multiply their respective probabilities, okay? So even in sports, right? Some of you are betters. Uh, let's say you want to bet a two-team parlay and you estimate that one team has a 30% chance of winning and the other team has a 40% chance of winning, and you wonder, what are the chances that both teams win? That means that two things both have to happen. Real simple. You multiply 30% by 40%, and you get 12%. And we'll get to that concept in a second, okay? So the Ravens are down seven points at the Bengals 17 yard line, and they can call a timeout with about 70 seconds left. There was about a minute 10 left, but they ran it down to 33 seconds. And they still had, I believe, two timeouts left. We're gonna make some assumptions and I'm gonna give you some probabilities. And this is just one estimate actually. Um, and so if you have any disagreements, I'd, I'd love to see your input because this is, this is one video where, you know, we're, depending upon your assumptions, would dictate that um, he made the right or perhaps wrong decision. All right, we're going to assume if they score, they go for one point, for an extra point. Of course, that's a big if with Harbaugh. We've seen him go for two points before, but let's just to keep things simple, they go for one. And we'll also assume that they make the extra point, which, of course, is never a given either. So I'm kind of, kind of cutting some corners here. Assume that nothing else quirky happens, like Cincy fumbling the kickoff, okay? So we're going to kind of make this pretty clean. Um, and, you know, so Baltimore's not going to win a game in regulation, okay? So there are two scenarios, okay? You call it, well, there's actually many scenarios, you might say, because you could call a timeout anywhere between a minute 10 and 33 seconds, but let's just compare a minute 10 to 33, okay? Those are the two scenarios. One is to call a timeout immediately. Um, now, I looked at some, some win probability calculators, and th this is hard to get a handle on because a lot of them don't include timeouts and so forth and the strength of the other team. So I took, an, this is one of my assumptions, took an educated guess. I said, let's say they have a 40% chance of scoring a touchdown, okay? They're at the 17-yard line, after all, and it's first down. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say, on average, when scoring they will leave 30 seconds on the clock, right? Of course, it's a minute 10. If they do call a timeout then, they might score immediately and there's a minute left or they might even run enough plays down to where there's three seconds left on the clock or whatever. I said, let's say on average, there's 30 seconds left, okay? That's the one scenario. I'm giving them 40% chance. The other scenario is where you run the clock down to, as Harbaugh did, to 33 seconds. Again, they have two timeouts. I'm going to give them, I took 20% off of the 40% that I gave uh, the in the other scenario. I'm going to give them a 32% chance of scoring a touchdown. It does decrease. In fact, we saw that play out, didn't we? Because there was a penalty. Now, they didn't end up converting on a fourth down, as it turned out, but they were tr they were struggling with the clock. And so, you know, perhaps the biggest concern was a penalty, and uh, so they did have less of a chance of a scoring a touchdown. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait a sec, boy, you just made the argument for him, uh, him uh, not calling a timeout immediately. Not quite, um, as we'll get to in a second. Let's say that if, you know, he, him having run it down, 32% chance of scoring a touchdown, let's say they, he leaves an average of 10 seconds left on the clock, okay? Now, of course, the reason he did that is because if the Bengals get the ball back, he did not want to give them time to win the game in regulation with a field goal. Let's assume that the Bengals get the ball back with 30 seconds left, which is the first scenario, 
that they win in regulation 25% of the time. Again, another assumption. I think that's reasonable. I believe the Bengals had two timeouts left. I know they had at least one. You have Joe Burrow, 30 seconds left. You run back the kickoff. You've got several plays. Place kickers hit 50-some yard field goals these days. I think one out of four times they might win in a regulation. That's 20%. Let's assume, though, with 10 seconds left, which is Harbaugh's way, there's just a 2% chance, right? Maybe Burrow makes a quick 30-yard completion. They kick a long field goal, you know, with one, with one play. I'm going to give them a 2% chance, okay? All right. Here's the number crunching. Harbaugh's way with 110 seconds left. And this gets back to the multiplying probabilities, right? Um, we're, we're going to look at things that have to happen for the Ravens to win, okay? So how do the Ravens win in the first scenario? Well, they score a touchdown. We said, um, oh, let me see. I might have said this. No, no, this is correct. I'm sorry. Okay, with 110 seconds left, which was not Harbaugh's way. I may have misspoken. With 110 seconds left, they have a 40% chance of getting a touchdown. We multiply that by the chance that the Bengals don't kick a field goal. Because let's think about this. This is using the complement in probabilities. Another concept. If the Bengals have a 25% of winning the game in regulation, they have a 75% chance of not winning in regulation, pending that the Ravens get a touchdown. Okay, so we take 40%, them scoring a touchdown, 75%, the Ravens not getting a field goal or a touchdown in regulation. And then the Ravens, of course, have to go on and win in overtime. I made another assumption. I said 50%. That's debatable. They were an underdog. Some people might say they shouldn't even have quite a 50%, but they had played well that game, which I think most of you would agree. So we'll give it a 50%. Anyway, if we multiply that together, we get 15% game winning chances. Okay. Harbaugh's way, 33 seconds left. Yep. We cut, he did hurt his touchdown chances and he paid for it. He looked bad. I, I knocked it down to 32%, but if they score, there's only a 90, or there is a 90%, I shouldn't say only a 98, there's only a 2% chance the Ravens, excuse me, <laughs> the Bengals win with a game-winning field goal. So there's a 98% chance that they don't, which means it goes into to overtime, which means there's, again, a 50% chance. We take 0.32 times 0.98 times 0.5, we get 15.7%. It's close. This And I tried to construct these numbers not knowing what was going to happen, what was going to develop. So this actually suggests Harbaugh was right by a little bit. Personally, I think he ran the clock down too much. But for everybody that wanted to crucify him, saying that he had no idea of clock management, I think it's totally unfair. He does have a good idea of clock management. He knew that the Bengals had a serious chance of getting a field goal if they get a touchdown too early, and that was his reasoning. So, anyway, um, this is uh, uh, these are my numbers. I'd love to hear your numbers. Maybe you disagree. And, of course, any assumptions change this one way or another. You might change an assumption, and this goes from 15 to 17%, or this goes from 15.7 to 14%. I think either way, it's a reasonably close decision. I thought it was an interesting sabermetric type problem at the end of a football game. And um, so that's what we've done. I thank you for watching. If you have not hit subscribe button, please do so. And we'll see you next time on Statistics Tell a Story.